simulated process is basically it's a simulation of four color process instead of using four color process inks cyan magenta yellow and black we're going to be using the actual color of ink so in this design which will be using a simulated process design we'll actually be using red or we would use green white and gray to, in order to create the design so now let's dive into photoshop and show how to separate this stuff now this is a tiff image on a black background so to set this image up we're first going to want to create a duplicate layer. That'll give us another working plate if we want to use a white underbase or anything like that. So we'll create a duplicate layer and that'll create two layers of the same thing. The next thing we're going to do is show you how to do gradient separations in Photoshop. Now this is more of an advanced image and we can also show a simpler image like this. This only has um, one or two colors. This one obviously has much more but the gradient separation in Photoshop is all done the same way. Now, If you try to use the gradient separation like you would do a spot color separation, it's going to be difficult. You'll come over to your magic wand tool, you'll click it, and then you'll try to separate some of the red out. And It will highlight some of it, but it won't grab the very fine detail if we zoom in by hitting Control plus. It's a hotkey. You'll notice that it's not getting this detail, and if we hit Control or Shift plus to try to grab it, it just highlights the whole thing. So it's really hard to color separate a gradient using basically impossible using the magic wand in Photoshop. So we're going to show you another way to do it. We'll right click and hit deselect and that'll give us back to where we started from. The first thing we want to do to this image is dictate if it needs a white underbase. With this particular image it will definitely need a white underbase because it has a black background and it's meant to go on a black shirt. So we'll go to our color range selection tool and then we'll click on the black part of the image. Now the one thing about choosing a white underbase is you don't want to invert it. You actually want to leave it selecting the black and pulling out the black so it just underbases that part of the image or where it needs to be printed over with color later. Then you can select how much you want. Now obviously if we have an underbase that is that overcoming like that we're going to actually be seeing white out of the edge of our image. We want to probably choke our underbase back a little bit because even there is fairly heavy and in the area right here where we have the, the flame, if we have that strong of a white underbase, you're going to be seeing white out of the image. Come back and we'll choke it back until we just see the white of where we need it. Select OK. Then we right click and save selection. What that does is we don't layer via cut or anything like that. We're actually saving the selection into a channel. So right click the selected area and choose save selection. Then under channel you say new channel and we'll call this white underbase. If we see our channels over here, we see now that would be our white underbase and if, if we added this to the rest of the image it will affect it as a white underbase. So we've created our white underbase, now we've got to go back to the drawing board. So we deselect that, we reselect the RGB of the image, and we right click it, deselect the image, and that clears everything out. Next thing we'll do is we'll color separate the red out of the image. Go to select color range and then click on the red. Now remember once we're selecting the red, we want to choose the invert and we only want to select the red out of the image. Now black has some red in it, so it's picking that up because we have way too much fuzziness or stroke on the image. So we're going to pull it back until we only see the red areas of the image. And that's something you're just going to have to get used to and learn and know how it coordinates with your press and your end result if you're going to be using the color selection tool to separate your own artwork in Photoshop. We right click, save selection, say red. So now over here we have our white underbase and then we have our red. There's our red right there. Now once again we're working in channels so we don't have to worry about converting to black or overprinting or anything like that as far as doing a color overlay because it's already converted into a channel. Deselect that, hide the rest of the image, see the red right there, 
and you go basically go through color by color. So you go through your gray, you go through your orange, you go through your green, and you go through a white highlight again to do if you wanted to do a highlight, which would be a final print of white. This takes a lot of playing with and a lot of learning in order to do correctly because you never know how much color value you're actually grabbing. You never know if this is too much of a white underbase or not enough of a white underbase. So you do, especially in a more complicated image like this, you do have to do a lot of playing, a lot of testing with it in order to get a result that would fit your, yours or your customer's needs. Ryan, Brad Lehman from Printed Calling. I uh, just wanted to uh, say kudos to you for selling me the spot process uh, program. We are very, very satisfied with the qualities of what we are doing out here. And to be able to get into the Las Vegas market and have this at our availability is just kind of the wow factor. Uh, I've been working with you guys for a little over five years. And today I can tell you I am a screen printer. Thanks, Ryan. Now, a simpler image like this, this eagle right here, this could be a lot easier to color separate. Um, if we go into selection, go into color range, and let's say we just wanted to take the orange out of it, just choose how much orange we actually want to take out. There we go. And then save selection. So a simple one or two grading image, much, much easier to color separate. All right, there we have the orange gradient. And then we go to the rest of the image and we would select RGB, deselect by right clicking, and then select color range, select the yellow in the image. Now we'll go and select the yellow in the image, color range. Choose how much yellow we want to blend into the orange. Save selection. And then finally, there's a yellow right there. We would come back and select the red. So now we have orange, red, and yellow. All separated. And if we had a black background here, or a new channel, then we could then see how this would, image would look similar to on a press, but you're really not going to see how it looks until it actually gets on the press. Once again, you do have to play around with it. How much do you, you know, need to blend these two colors together in order to get your results? But if you're separating gradients and photoshops, that is how you do it under the select and the color range menu. Hopefully I haven't scared you that much because this does take a lot of experience in order to know how much to do that. And that's why most printers go with a color separation program. that You don't have to play around with all these settings in order to know that your stuff is going to look good when it gets onto the press. Now the thing about Photoshop and using the color range tool is you're limited to how much value it actually picks up to the color. And sometimes actually getting the true image out onto the press is very difficult, especially if you're working in Photoshop. You already saw the limitations and how many variables there were when I was doing this by hand. 
basically if you're using the color separation programs with fast films quick steps or any of the other programs out there that work as an actions palette or plugin in Photoshop you're limited to what that person creating the program thought would look great good on the press so um, really it's it's a, a viable tool that you can use but it does work within Photoshop and you do have to play with it a lot once the image is color separated you do have to come and you might have to combine channels you might have to boost values because typically it only color separates it into one program color separates it into seven colors one program color separates it into eight channels or nine channels one will color separate it into 42 channels so you're taking all these minute color values you have to start combining the channels in order to take those colors down and actually get your end result of a five or six color print now a good program to use is called ViewRight or Spot Process. Spot Process actually doesn't work within Photoshop and was created outside of Photoshop specifically for simulated process separations. Spot Process is a program made by the manufacturers of AccuRip. It was actually a predecessor to AccuRip, but it's a very, very good program. Uh, fairly easy to use, has great tech support and great training videos. We're just gonna show you quickly how it works I'm not going to get into the training of spot process because that's included with your DVD and also with the package when you buy it. The program runs about uh, $6.95. Um, the newer versions will be a little bit more expensive than that, but compared to some of the other ones, which are $9.95 and up, it's actually a pretty good deal. Let's show you how to use it. First, you need to have a black background, so the image that we're working with before that motorhead design is what we'll use. Let's open up that same image right here in Spot Process. As it opens up, it actually color separates it at the same time. So it's running Spot Process and reading the color values of the image. Now, over here you can see the channels of the separation. And if I unselect the channels, you can see this is the white underbase. Then you have the red, the blue, yellow, purple, green, turquoise, gray, and then final black. Every single color separation it does, it does in these six, nine colors. So we have actual inks for spot process that you can use, or if you have a Pantone matching system, you can get the ink values of these colors and actually Pantone match your inks in order to match that. It's a really cool system that really cuts down the brain work having to do color separations and knowing what you need to use for each design how much of this to pull out, how, many, how much of color range you want to mess with for the yellow or the, or the red or the green. From here, we can play with it and we can adjust those levels. I'll so, show you a very simple demonstration of what we can do. We're going to apply the green channel to the red channel in order to create the eyes red instead of green, so we actually color, uh, cut down the amount of colors in this particular print. So we just choose the highlighted selected red channel, then we go to channels, and then we'll choose apply channel. We actually want to apply the green channel to the red channel. So we select the green channel to apply. Hit OK. And now if we come back over here, we'll notice that our motor head has red eyes because it applied the green part of the image to the red. And that's just some of the simplicity of Spot Process. Once you really get to know the program, and if you're using good quality artwork, this is a great program to use. It does your highlight, final white, and really takes a lot of the brain works out of color separations for you. So you have awesome looking prints without having to spend all your time over here messing with color values and color range tools and not really knowing how it's gonna look until it gets on the press and then having to come back to your artwork and make finalizing adjustments in order to get a good looking print. This can save a lot of time. From here actually you don't print your separations out from this program you would import it into Illustrator or CorelDRAW. Any of either of those programs will work just fine and you actually save this as an EPS.